welcome Tripa to Zen On Go and Love Heals Cancer. As you know, we are here to share your cancer healing journey so that other people can get motivation and inspiration from it. And uh, that's it's just consider this as a basic conversation. It's not an interview. So be comfortable and we'll start. So yeah. we can start by you sharing your journey. And then if I have some questions, I'll ask them in between. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So hi, uh, my name is Kripa. I hail from Chennai. Uh, so it all began uh, from a very unusual abdomen pain. Uh, so I couldn't um, bear that pain. It was, uh, it was... It was very unusual for me to have abdomen pain because I never had any pains and uh, anything related to periods. That is the first question people ask, Are you, is your periods regular? So uh, my pain, I didn't really know which doctor to go to, whether should I go to a gastro surgeon, should I go to a gynecologist? I chose and this was this happened last August and during this COVID time. And uh, not many hospitals had doctors. Um, only if there was emergency, there would be. Mine was an emergency uh, kind of situation. So after the abdomen pain, I had to be rushed to the hospital. And um, I explained to the gynecologist that um, I'm having so and so pain. I couldn't explain the pain. It was that bad, that horrible pain. I had a pain even uh, the previous day, but uh, we have this habit of ignoring pains, you see. We don't really, ah, okay, chale, it's, I mean, it's maybe it's some small uh, pain. So I had, I thought it was gas and I had uh, jellucid. I thought, okay, it will just go away. And I had a dolo also. So I, actually the pain subsided after the dolo, but the next day it was... I don't know. I can't explain that pain. It was very painful. I couldn't even stand that. Even that time, I didn't think I will be diagnosed with something like this. And then I went to the hospital and they said it may be a cyst in the ovary and um, that the cyst would have gone and gotten got itself uh, twisted around the ovaries. So then I think we will have to remove the ovaries and uh, I went into an emergency surgery. So in between, I had to be tested negative for COVID because the hospital that I chose uh, is a COVID-free hospital. So, and uh, we knew the hospital doctors very well. So that was a plus, I think. That was a big plus. So after the emergency surgery, they got to know it is nothing to do with uh, what they assumed it to be. That was something called as ovarian torsion. So they presumed it is ovarian torsion, but after, when they opened uh, laparoscopic surgery, I had. So when they opened and they realized it is not ovarian torsion, it is something else. So what they found was a blood mass, mass that got ruptured and I had a lot of internal bleeding in, uh, in the area of ovaries, not in the ovaries, um, around that area, okay, in the abdomen uh, region. Uh, and because of this internal bleeding, I had this pain. So they cleared the entire thing and they were, they were not sure what that, mass or the blood mass so they thought it must be hemorrhoids or something like that they usually don't think it is cancer in the first thing first place so what ha happened is they gave that uh, whatever chunk they removed from uh, my uh, that part i don't know that part so they gave it for testing and um, uh, they doubted that it might be tumor, but obviously they will not tell their patient unless and until it is clinically tested. So, and then I got discharged. I went home and I think the test will take about two, three days for it to, I mean, especially pathology lab results will come a little later. So at home, when I was at home, that is when... Um, my husband got the news for me. He said uh, uh, that, you know, you are, uh, the results have come. 
ha uh, so i didn't even my in my wildest dream think that it would be cancer and then he said it's uh, your diagnosed with cancer i was like i didn't know how to react to that uh, you know um, you know because i was planning to start a family that that was the time you know every uh, um, you know everybody will be in their different stages of life they would have never planned something like this no one plans for all these things it just happens and um, and when they said this uh, that you having this and and mine was the rarest form of cancer because i'm special you see <laughs> so <laughs> and i've never heard of those terms you know it's called yolk sac tumor and it was i was like what is that and i've never ha- ha- heard of it and no no you are um, then that was not the uh, i mean that was not the only uh, horrifying news it was yolk sta- uh, yolk sac tumor stage 4 you already reached stage 4 and the tumor has spread to liver uh, intestine and rectum already um, so we were completely blank now when the doctors called they just said this and then they said you have to undergo chemotherapy and in google believe me nothing i could see regarding this particular uh, cancer that is yolk sac tumor i think only one article i saw and there was nothing mention about this and i didn't know the spelling also whether it is yolk egg yolk wala you know yolk or yolk i then i was like i i the first thing that came to my mind is oh am i going to lose my hair because visually you can only see this i am not seen how cancer patients suffer and i didn't have any reference person to talk to and ask how are, how is their experience what does it feel does it pain i didn't have anybody to even ask how what when where nothing and i in my family i didn't have anyone who has been who has gone through uh, uh, this particular cancer itself maybe in a very a uh, distant relative would have had but i couldn't get the experience from that i mean the near uh, from my cousins or anybody i i don't know any anything about it i just know okay cancer means chemotherapy and what chemotherapy does to you nothing i had no clue and that the the till i reached the you know conclusion of this is the hospital uh this is a doctor who's going to uh, treat me till then from the day i heard it was like a chaotic mind and chaotic situation for me i didn't know like how to what to should i cry should i laugh at my you know uh, situation and then they said it's quite responsive to chemotherapy this this particular cancer so that itself was okay chalo i'm not going to die then he said no life threatening episodes may come during the treatment but this cancer will not cause you uh, you know um, that is you will you will not die but during the treatment anything can happen so now that is enough no to scare anybody <laughs> we never know what is going to happen in the, during the course of uh, the chemotherapy itself so i after i think i gave it a thought for uh, i think one week i exactly had one week they didn't give me much time to start chemo because mine is a malignant uh, tumor and very very aggressive so they actually said the if the tumor size is this uh, and each and every day it is growing by you know growing bigger and bigger um, they are not even giving me i asked them can i take 10 days or 15 days can i take 15 days to get back to you yes, they were but then but then i wanted 15 days because if i because i was planning for a pregnancy right so that to that to is ruled out only normal pregnancy that is so now they said if the chemotherapy you are going to start chemotherapy your eggs will be um, it will lose its quality it will not be as good as your the normal uh, 
uh, woman. So they they suggested that I freeze my eggs. So that freezing of eggs for future, that is after chemotherapy, if at all, if I want to get pregnant, that is the option most of the doctors give you. That is when you are married and you don't have kids. Uh, so that is the option I was planning to take up. But I was just came out of bad surgery now and again I had to go through this. So mentally I was not willing to go through all this and I was like, if I'm not there, then how will I even you know, take care of my children? So I just thought, okay, I don't want children now. That is not important now. I can even adopt later. But now so I want me. I want me. And they didn't give me enough time um, uh, for freezing of eggs, I needed like 15 days. They said, I cannot give you 15 days. So I had to start the chemo immediately. And I, within less, less than a week, I started my chemo journey. And believe me, I had no clue of chemo. I just know my uh, somebody, somebody, somebody told me that it is, you, you're going to feel uh, you're going to feel vomiting uh, during the chemo. That's all. You're going to feel nauseatic during the therapy and that's it. Then when I am I am experiencing it, I realize, oh God, this is the worst. Your enemy also shouldn't get yeah. That bad it was. My God, you lose taste. You lose smell. Taste bits though... You, you can't taste anything. Even if you're putting salt in your mouth also, you will not know. It's like eating mud. No taste. And hair, so visibly, visible changes are your hair. You go bald. So after one cycle, your hair starts falling down. Hair everywhere. So I decided, okay, so the good thing about uh, what I have accept, I mean, what I tactic that I use to conquer this disease is mainly maybe because I have accepted this is my journey this is six months of my life um, it's for this it's going to be like this only and it is going to be painful and I have to make up my mind for this so I decided let let it instead of it's your own um, sulking and you know crying it's of no use no use crying yeah you will feel you will feel like crying and i've cried a lot but <laughs> instead of crying and you know making a fuss of all this oh why me this uh, instead of that i decided to you know um, film myself cutting my hair i made my husband cut my hair so all that is memorable today when i see that oh my god i can't believe i had that you know, uh, strength to do all this. It will, it will look all silly. That minute, people around me were like, Are, why are you doing all this? Um, you know, no need. Let it fall if it has to fall your hair. I couldn't bear the thought of my hair falling. Yeah. You just normal person when they take bath and they complain, oh, so much hair fall, so much hair fall. And look at the kind of hair I was losing this much. You know, I, I can literally say, I can carry that much hair. I couldn't see. So I decided to cut short my hair uh, before this uh, treatment started and I filmed the entire comedy so I can watch during my treatment and laugh about it. And that is what I did. And uh, I mean, that is just, just the beginning. And uh, after the treatment started, I started seeing a lot of hair falling. Then I took a, you know, trimmer and I just made, I wanted to shave my head off completely. That's what I did. Then when the chemotherapy started, I think uh, more than I told you about vomiting, no? it was not vomiting. You want to vomit, you can't vomit. It's that feeling. And you don't know what that feeling is. And everything, the things that you used to like before, you will not like during the chemo because chemo is very, very powerful uh, drug that they inject, inject in you. So, and my treatment is uh, very um, intense. So I had like four chemo uh, cycles. So 
uh, each chemo cycle is for five days hospitalization. Uh, so that is something new to me because most of the uh, breast cancer uh, survivors whom I spoke to, they said they had only one day uh, chemo and half day. There's morning they go and evening they come back. And when they told me mon um, 13 hours per day, you have to uh, take the chemo drug for five days hospitalization. That was like one day when they put the injection, I didn't realize, ah, okay, I just put on music full loud music and they injected my god it is just not that drug yeah you will go mad only it's like i don't know i i don't know what to say everything you can you you know you, that even the smell the smell is also very disgusting you know you know even the smells that you used to like before maybe lavender you used to like now it tastes like i mean smells like gutter and you can smell the bad smell from a very long you know, distance. And that is so prominent in your nose. You feel like vomiting. So whatever you eat comes out. So you drink, you drink tea, tea comes out. Coffee, coffee comes out. So initially I thought something to do with my stomach. Then the doctor might, I'm, I'm very grateful that I got very good doctors who completely was transparent with me regarding the procedures treatment, what goes into me, everything. So that way I was, um, so I was not kept in the dark. And believe me, from the start of chemotherapy uh, till my surgery, I did not use Google. I didn't Google any word that came out immediately from my doctor's mouth Because I didn't want to get scared. Already I'm scared. And I told my doctor, see, I'm not um, going to Google anything. So I am under your, you know, I mean, I am surrendering myself to you. Please get me out of this. He was like, yes, for that only we are all here. And um, after, um, in my case, two times I had to, I came back to, I came back home after chemotherapy. That is sixth day I come back. Again, I fall sick because there is a body graph for uh, chemo patients. The first five days, they give you the drug. And when you go back home, your immunity falls down. And then by the time, the third week, your immunity comes up. By the time your immunity comes back, you are ready for the next cycle. So basically, you have like three days when your taste buds come back. And those three days, I ensured that I had uh, a brownie or something because that's it. That that's all. That I'll get only those three days, and then by the time I am back uh, relishing my favorite stuff, I'm ready for the next cycle. Then the next cycle uh, didn't really go well with me um, because my immunity um, fell down very bad after I came back home. That is after my second cycle, I came back home. And then I immediately was rushed to the hospital because my fever was 100. For a normal person, it's okay. For a chemo patient, 100 is not a good sign. And my BP was below, uh, I think it was 50 or something. It was very low. Mm -hmm. And I was straight gone to ICU and I had needed the blood also blood transfusion happened and then I was not only in ICU I was in critical care unit for four days and there was no um, good news so I, I but I was active and I was um, there were see when when your immunity is low you will get attracted all these infections you will start picking up either external or internal if not external your body itself will invent a new uh, infection and it's called it's called something i forgot so uh, my body developed an infection by itself and i had to be hospitalized and i would i have never been that critical in my life it was almost like gone so the only thing that I came out of all this is prayers. So many people must have prayed for me. I think that's the only reason. Not even, I will not say science, medicine, treatment. I don't think so. 
because four days I was in the ICU and nothing really worked. And for, uh, fifth day, I'm, I'm still in the ICU, but I'm okay, out of danger. And I, I, I definitely will have to say it's only prayers, yeah, nothing else. I know um, many people... I have seen many people I, I, when before nailing down this hospital. I went to many, many hospitals. Even though during this Corona time itself, we went to a lot of hospitals. And I've seen there is a famous institute in Chennai called as Adyar Cancer Institute. There, the uh, the treatment is affordable for anybody. So many people who are underprivileged, they come there. And when I saw them all, all of them struggling to even stand and pipes hanging everywhere, that is when I got so scared, you know. I was like, oh God, this is cancer, huh? Like this I'm going to be. And when I was in ICU, I had pipes everywhere. <laughs> here, here. All over my face, on my neck and my chest. I had pipes everywhere, hanging everywhere. And I never realized this. I will be in this state. But somehow I came out of that and then I thought, okay, um, we, then we what we did is we changed the drug that actually caused uh, me into this serious situation. We changed the entire drug itself, which is which has never been done before. But we had to do it because my life was in danger. So we changed the drug and uh, I continued my chemotherapy. So after four cycles, I uh, again took a PET scan, PET CT scan to see the difference. The first, you know, after, I mean, before chemo and after chemo. And uh, there was a very good difference, you know. Um, so the treatment has worked. So the next thing is to not have any cell tumor cells in my body. So I had to go through surgery. Surgery also a lot of complications. And they said that they will have to remove my intestines and they have to remove my liver. They will remove my rectum. Are if you remove all these, how am I going to be? Yeah, what is the point of being alive if you... Uh, so I was very scared. I was very scared. Maybe outside I wasn't showing anybody that I'm this scared, but yeah, I was I was crying, every day crying, getting up, crying, sleeping, also crying, eating, while I'm eating, I'm crying. Then, because I'm, I'm a very active person and suddenly when you're given all these limitations and I have to carry, they said they, uh, they, they're going to cut my intestine and they're going to attach some tube uh, for passing stools and that bag that pouch will be on your uh, you know it will be on your uh, stomach and then there will be a belt to hold that stool bag when they said all that I, <laughs> I said no that's like a punishment already chemotherapy is like a punishment only I cannot go further but with but still, okay, chalo, I had to do it. There's, there's no other go. I have to because for them, for the doctors, uh, remo removal of cancer cells uh, is more important than uh, the organ itself. So I went into the surgery. Uh, it was like a 10 to 12 hour long surgery. They removed uh, one third of my liver, uh, which will grow back. So intestines they didn't touch and and that way they themselves were surprised oh how i mean because they are the ones who told me you know i'm going to do this i'm going to do that i mean nothing of that sort happened my ovaries were intact uh, absolutely very clear and they didn't cut they didn't take away any uh, important major parts that would cause hindrance in the functioning of my system so that way there, I think, in in the movie, they say, no, it's a miracle, medical miracle. It's exactly that case for me. That means so many people, as your tagline says, no, love heals cancer. Who are those people who are praying for me? They have love for me. That's why they are praying, no? So, yeah, that's it. Now, um, 
after the surgery i came out and i asked the first question i asked the nurse was telling me that the first question i asked is how many parts are removed from my body <laughs> they said none oh okay then i went off to sleep and then uh, after that yeah then the next thing is the main thing the tumor cells that they remove they remove almost everything they didn't leave even one uh, a dot so they removed everything and then they gave it to uh, the labs for testing and uh, the result that came surprised everybody and everyone everyone were very happy that is uh, the, they have removed all the tumor cells and there is no life in any of those tumor cells that means i, I am declared cancer free on i mean on that day it is last year december so whatever hard work that we have all undergone has paid off well i in in during the treatment i even not even i mean i think it's not even um one minute i thought i will not die i will always be think anyway i'm going to die anyway i'm going to die it was like that only full time whatever i'm doing this is the only thought i had many people you know they will keep messaging think positive this you have to be strong or oh, it's all bullshit yeah. i used to get so pissed off you know i used to whatsapp only i used to close and i'll just keep away enough enough because it's so easy to say be positive you can't you can't be positive yeah you are always throwing tantrums you are always short tempered i'm talking about me i don't know about others but i didn't know what how to you know i was getting angry for no reason no reason you know um, me and my brother had a fight over a silly tissue paper and it was such a big fight i was shouting at him for no reason for taking one silly tissue paper so that that actually shows so much of anger and you know but what i am trying to say is all this is common and people have to accept that this is okay it's okay to be angry because this is just a phase it's not going to continue i thought i am going to be angry even after this i had no hope yeah my sister cousin sister who's i think she is the one who introduced me to a uh, zen onco um i was a part of a zen onco and then i uh, came out of the group because again they are also positive positive today i know what it means but that that time of frame of mind i was not willing to accept people hey be positive everything will be okay no i couldn't even take that then i realized i started accepting that see this is how it is going to be i uh, the moment you know that this is this is um a plus b is equal to c if you accept that then i think it will be easy for you and we have to think that it's um more than we are anyway suffering and there's a person who's taking care of us that person is seeing you suffering it is even more hurtful we are suffering we we can feel the pain whatever pain physically mentally but the person who's taking care of us he is seeing us going through the pain it is more painful than um uh, us feeling the pain itself so at least for them we should try to you know um help each other i think the person who's taking care of us holding us and vomiting vomiting constantly vomiting holding that person it is not easy yeah it's not easy but it's not impossible it's really not impossible because i have been a volunteer before i have never realized that i will be uh, a patient or <laughs> i will be in the receiving end because i have uh, been a volunteer for cancer patients itself by giving them biscuits uh providing all the nutritious meals and then and then, uh in time and time again i didn't realize i will be the one to receive it so we never know what is going to happen tomorrow 
so if when you know somebody is suffering just don't call them and tell them you know i am there for you just be there because it's easy you know to say hey you can call me whenever you want that is so easy to say but are you really there is my question because i know many many people uh, they have asked me hey whenever you want to tell me anything no kripa you call me i will not feel like calling that person so the best thing to do is see in this whole cancer treatment it's only a mind huh? vomiting to is there you that is that you can't avoid but the thing that you can do is keep your mind you can have to keep your mind active you should not try to you should not let it go it is so easy you know to let your mind wander into that uh, space that negative space you can't keep be positive people say you be positive read that shloka read this hanuman chalisa that will not work dude i'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> even while reading hanuman chalisa i'm thinking oh tomorrow i'm going to die on before sure <laughs> that that's that's the thought i think it's very common today i feel like silly that day why did i do this why did i do that it's so silly to today when i think about it but chemo will not allow you to be the person you are if you are a very nice energetic person i am like that but it will not allow you to be that person that you used to be it will only try to pull all your energy down you are already exhausted the things that i kept doing is i i started reading a lot of books instead of telling people read books read listen to music just tell them what to do hey did you read this book hey did you read krishna ki that is a book why didn't you why don't you read this instead of saying hey, you watch movies okay in no don't say like that don't say watch movies just tell them the movie name hey did you watch this movie it is very good you if you know your friend you know, if you know someone who's going through this period and if you know that person likes something you should try to tell them you know why don't you do this and specifically you have to tell if you just say hey watch movies now you are feeling bored okay why don't you listen to music that will not work what you will not feel like doing so just if you are being very specific no that person it, it all depends on how that person is each technique will work for my technique may not work for another person so music means i like all this i don't like melody type of music i will always listen to dinchak music only so for me that injection laga rahe ho okay i have to listen to dinchak music then only i will not get that pain so so i am that type of person and someone has to give me a playlist you know hey listen to this so there were many people who were helping helpful enough to send me the playlist hey listen to this 10 songs very good it is um just tell me from this which one you like the most all those things you should start doing and you can do all this only an active person i mean your mind is active only thing is you physically not able to get up not do anything you know there were times when i forgot how to i am a graphic designer so i forgot the basic commands of photoshop during chemo treatment i was trying to keep myself active not be sleeping in the bed so i got up and i start i opened my laptop i didn't i forgot my password it was like oh my god i forgot so many things i mean i thought i'm forgetting and i'm becoming old all those th- thoughts will definitely come you can't avoid it but you should understand that it is all temporary and many people will give you hundreds of advice advice you so much forwards so whatsapp forwards so yeah we are very gifted people like that we have a lot of people to advise us you know you do this you do that i am telling you you do only what your doctor has told you and if your doctor has told to do this is this you follow that and to keep up your main thing is to keep up your immunity you whether you like it you don't like it you have to do it no choice taste and all anyway you will not get any taste taste so it's gone only so this is the best time utilize and eat the things that you don't like which are actually good for your health that is what i have been doing but emotional turbulence keeps happening 
throughout. That is where we need to actually work. Um, yeah, I think more of getting involved in a lot of activities would actually help people um, instead of, you know, just just telling them, hey, why don't you read a book? <laughs> See, that is so irritating, you know. And actually, you can gift them a book. Hey, take this book, read this book. This is very nice. He has done like that. If you say all that, then I think it's more nice than actually telling, hey, call me, I'm there for you. You are not there, yeah. Really, nobody is there because everybody is busy. And now to COVID time, everybody are busy with their own lives. And yeah, and I don't know if this is quite helpful. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. But it's it, the moment you accept that this is how you are going to um, live your six months of uh, life and you have dedicated this time for your uh, treatment then then I think I think you have done it acceptance is very important you don't think about the end result whether it's positive or negative but at least you're living that journey you know that journey is actually more important than the result because um, yeah and I think if you can't be positive throughout the journey that though you have to write it in your head people will say People will say 100 things. Don't go by what people say. Okay? Because they have not gone through that. People who have gone through or telling means okay. They will also sometimes say, <laughs> be positive. You can't be positive and it's okay to not be positive. Okay? Because those, you need some time to cry. People will say, don't cry. You know? Many people have told me, don't cry. Don't cry. No, you should cry. You should cry. Don't keep anything inside. Just cry. If there is nobody with you to cry, you cry to yourself, look at mirror, cry, and then come back. Don't keep crying. Come back to the original state. And try to, uh, and before chemo, I would suggest people to prepare your journey. That's, uh, that's what you have to do. Um, keep everything that you would, I mean, different people like to do different things. So the things that you would want, you have never done before, don't try to do all that now during the chemo time. You may want to do starting and all. I thought, oh, I will paint and all. No, that and all will not work. <laughs> so keep it simple. Uh, try to read a lot of books. Books uh, because you will start when you start reading. No, you you get teleported into a different world. Some people love a lot of movies. I think I watched the maximum number of movies during my treatment. I think and. Uh, watch movies that don't make sense at all some crappy movies are there no they are meant for this only to help us uh, go through difficult times they are made they are purposely made all those bakwas type of movies are made for people like us who are going through difficult times to laugh okay so that's how you need to be prepared and make a wish list of things that you want to watch before the treatment starts and then i think that's how you have to you know that's how you have to keep up your spirit nothing else and don't think too much about this you i mean if it's going if it's difficult if it's it definitely it is going to be painful only but that you have to also think about the person who's taking care of you let us not give that person inconvenience of taking care of you you should not think are baba what is this you should not think like that, no. I mean, whoever, husband, wife, brother, father, mother, whoever, because they also have work. So, yeah. And whoever is going through this, um, I, my heartiest wishes for you, uh, this is not going to be permanent. This is just a phase. And we don't know the reason why it is happening unlike heart disease or any other disease. So this is not like a disease or something. If it has happened to you, that means you're very special. No, it is not just a quote that I'm saying. I really felt I'm very special when I got it because I, first of all, I got the rarest form and uh, mine is a pediatric cancer, it seems. That, that means, look, I am 33 years old person and 
there are children who are going through these things that means if so and if you have got it that means and when you when you finish all these things you know when you finish all the uh, struggle and when you see today like today when i look back i can't believe that i have gone through this so you will also be very happy and proud about the journey that you uh, that you have gone through see now i'm not working anywhere but if there are working women who are going through this definitely you will have a you know work um so if you are at home and you're juggling between work don't do that 6 months or whatever number of months that you are uh treatment will, you know you are supposed to take treatment you will have to take rest because you can't you can't say okay after coming back from chemo i'll go to work it will not work it is not going to work and you need to have time for yourself if you give time to your body and your mind then you will come out of it quicker if there are things that you can't see i mean um, there are things that you can't see apart from the that the medicines are not the only things that are that is going inside the things that you're feeding to your body and your mind no? that also is plays a very important role in the treatment itself i have seen that i am i was someone who didn't believe all that but now when it has happened to me it's like a miracle for me and it has opened my eyes that oh this has happened to me now i am here so i am also wishing all those people who are going through this difficult times i hope you also have a very good journey um yeah it's okay to be not positive all the time you can't so yeah all the best i have nothing else to say but these are the things that i could tell you so that if it helps you i'm i'm i mean i'm i'll be the happiest yeah over to you ritika can i ask you some things like uh Uh, just like uh, did you take any complementary therapies other than uh, the prescribed doctors treatment um, yeah actually uh, that that came during my treatment uh, we we were thinking of taking um, something like to boost up our immunity but i didn't go for any uh, extra therapy because of the covid situation here and i i was not very sure um how and i didn't know who has taken it before that is also there like every new thing that comes na we have to call up and again did you try that is it working for you that is how people in india are they will go back to that person and ask is it working for you or oh, not working for oh, then i will also not take that's that that's how it is and experimenting something like this our this traditional doctors will not prescribe you to take this route definitely not because they are doctors themselves so they will only suggest take this take vitamin c take vitamin c to that is for sure so they will tell just try to take a nutritious diet which will anyway come out of your body but complementary therapy um i i have not taken but um, today i am th- thinking i should have taken then to avoid that icu trips you know if immunity falls down you never know what infection your body picks up as i said told you if the body itself was uh, it will start generating infection the body itself will have infection inside so uh, maybe if i had taken that therapy those infection wouldn't have happened i don't know but not much uh, we don't have much uh, people who have taken that that's why i didn't go for it yeah and what about the side effects after chem- after your treatment there are side effects of chemo and everything so how did you do- deal with them yeah that's currently what i'm going through now uh, so during uh, after my last chemo that was in november um, i started uh, developing this uh, early menopause so during the chemotherapy your periods uh, is i mean it will not work your that system will not work and you will stop uh, uh you will stop uh, menstruating so 
during that time after i mean after the chemo uh, i had this uh, early menopause system i mean symptoms that is uh, sweating hot flash we say hot flashes your head will start sweating for no reason for maybe 3 minutes and suddenly you will feel restless initially i thought something happened to me but then i understood that it is a the side effect so this is one of the side effect the other side effect that is uh, your i used to get shocks in my um, electrical shock in my left hand and my hand fingers will always be numb my feet and hands are always numb and i cannot feel anything um so i can't i can't hold anything if i hold something i'll suddenly get a shock and i'll drop it down so all that i think with, this is something to do with nerves and you will definitely have neurological problems uh, after a chemo that's what my doctor said but you don't have to do anything the best thing is to go and tell your doctor openly that this is what you are having and during the treatment if any we have any thing apart from uh, what is already been described you should definitely tell your doctor because it is very important to tell everything to your doctor your skin skin will start becoming a little darker and your nails will become black all these are side effects that i have seen and um yeah so your skin will become dry and you will develop ulcers in your mouth during chemo i did not have that problem but my doctor said i would have sometimes while brushing you, your gums may start bleeding because during uh, the the treatment i develop a deep vein thrombosis in between uh, uh, the treatment i develop uh, dvt so i'm ha- actually having blood thinness even today i have inserted a chemo port inside me that actually uh, that is uh, instead of uh, pricking me 100 times here you if you see you no know, that venflon we say you no know, instead of that instead of giving medicine through that venflon because um, uh, you will have to keep disconnecting when you go to the bathroom you will have to disconnect this and then go to the bathroom and come back and by the time you come back your blood cl- blood is already clotted here so then they have to remove that part and then again prick and you are running out of places of pricking in your body so and i had five days of hospitalization so just imagine there the thing the the liquid is going inside your body you will have to come, keep going to the bathroom more often so i inserted chemo port here um so that chemo port is um, that is that is going to help be helpful to cancer patients who are having more than 3 uh, days of hospital visits so they just insert in uh, they just one uh, insert the injection inside and through that it will be like it's like a drips you know instead of here you have here and this is inside you till the treatment finishes so yeah that is it's it's like a stethoscope you know stethoscope the end part which they hold that thing is there inside i mean it looks like that so it's called chemo port so helpful. that is very helpful for people who have uh, to take keep pricking you know it is very painful i'm not talking about the injection when the blood clots it is so painful no it, yeah i can't i can't take i can't i'm scared of injections even today <laughs> even i'm scared of injections <laughs> so yeah even after taking hundreds of injections and um, during the treatment i i had to take uh, blood thinner injections every day injection my husband has become a nurse now <laughs> so he has been putting injection and then uh, immunity when the immunity falls there is something called as booster injection immunity booster so uh, your wbc uh, it will increase your wbc so that also one injection so daily two injection i had to take <laughs> so this is the accept it. you have to accept it yeah so now i'm still on uh, the side effects i have no problems uh, i have 
uh, numbness in all the fingers i can't feel anything in the morning it is like how you know when you sleep on your palm for like one hour when you remove your head it how do you feel ha ah, like that that feeling i'll have throughout the day morning to night i will not know what is even if you pour something hot on this i will not know so the these side effects are temporary it will last maybe for 6 months i have been having since 5 months now i am hoping it is it will go away next one i can see it is reducing even after the cancer is over now i am cancer free i am going on monthly checkup every month i i have something called as tumor markers it's it's a blood test it's called afp i don't know how useful it is but i'll just tell you it's called alpha feta protein it is an afp blood test so uh, the value has to be from 0 to 7 initially mine was 12000 so that is when we want to know oh, maybe it is tumor so the value has to be between 0 to 7 so you have to keep t- testing for uh, the tumor markers in your blood every month and if at all if i get the cancer back i have to get it treated immediately so my type of cancer even if it reoccurs it will only reoccur in the first two years after it has been treated after that it is i mean you don't have to be bothered it will not come back unlike other bre- uh, breast cancer or some it will you have you don't know whether it will come back so mine is something like this that you can be sure that after 2 years if it isn't coming back it will not come back i don't know that is the idea so far that's what my oncologist has told me and uh, yeah so the side effects are one is that thought flash that also will just the, the frequency will keep coming down suddenly feeling what? restlessness suddenly suddenly even if you sitting in the ac also suddenly you will feel hot hot very hot and then you want to get up run away to some fan or something that's what i used to do when i was, went to a restaurant having food suddenly getting up and running away people will be thinking hey what happened don't worry <laughs> it is just a side effect of the chemo and your hair will start growing like i don't know it's growing like i don't know wild gra- garden it whatever <laughs> but it is growing <laughs> good news so that means when chemo is there in your body you will have all these side effects somewhere it will definitely be there no so the moment it's completely getting flushed out of your body you will come back to your normal self but um, yeah so so far these are the two side effects that is your feet also you know under uh, your feet will also feel numb and when you're doing this now you we, we keep doing this now so when you do this you get one shock feeling here and then your uh, and also you have pain in my wrist it's called compressed nerves your nerves will get compressed in one area and your nerves will start paining here so basically these are all side effects is what my doctor said and yeah i think that's it as a word So what would you like to say about your caregiver like your husband was there throughout your whole journey so yeah. is there something that you would like to say about him like how he supported you and everything yeah uh, it's very important to have an attender um, whoever it's if it's a spouse or if it's a son daughter whoever um yeah and he if if there is an attender if there is a attender who can uh, you know balance emotional emotionally i mean you shouldn't be some it shouldn't be someone who gets irritated very fast na are what is this yeah it, i mean so my husband thankfully he is not like that uh, and i should be grateful that you know that um, he has been there through and through he and i live in a joint family so he and my father in law they have taken care of me like i don't know who else would have even taken care of me like that i know it is a responsibility but 
some things are there beyond responsibility you know that i don't know i don't know what to say but you need someone to take care of you for sure that itself will uh, you know 50% of your problems will come down at least oh you know okay somebody is there for me to take care so i'm hoping that nobody gets that situation nobody should be in that situation this corona itself is enough for everyone <laughs> it's so <only> irritating <laughs> yeah and the most important thing to have cancer during corona is to have the corona itself my god you know i have gone through like 10 to 12 covid test because in the hospital that i am treat, being treated as covid free and if they tell me i am covid positive then gone khatam i have to get admitted to some new hospital new doctor oh that was that is that is an another nightmare only so it's better to be safe better to be take all precautions whatever we can we should do don't touch your face if if at all you're getting a doubt that you know yeah and the urge of touching your face is more if your hands are bare if you wear gloves you don't will not feel that and caretaker of course if the caretaker is a a, a person who can be at home then good if the person is going to office it's literally impossible for that person to take 6 months of leave that is also there and uh, we keep drinking this immunity you know drumstick soup um, beetroot soup and you know pomegranate juice which is very important for the blood you know especially now when you are taking chemotherapy your blood becomes very thick and it is a highly um you know the high high um, your blood is at high risk of becoming you know the, uh, of uh, clotting so when it clots now you will develop something called as deep vein thrombosis like mine maybe you can google these terms <laughs> but um, yeah so you need to keep drinking this pomegranate juice uh, drumstick soup it's all very easy and i used i am very grateful to my father in law who he, who did all this who gave me all this care and you know i had lot of cravings you will start craving to eat some things that you will you would have never you know never had it before maybe i felt like eating a uh, mango which is not a season that time august to december but i was going mad i wanted to eat mango so bad Oh, where is a mango? I used to get angry. I want mango now, but you know, but still somehow getting mango. All these are small incidences that has actually uh, helped me through my journey. Um, having an attender who who can keep the keep calm that is a gift itself, you know. And family support definitely you should have. if you don't have then uh, i don't know but um it's so that is you should have i mean that is the prayer that everyone should have a support from family uh, and especially and spouse mother father so obviously you will definitely take care spouse it's not necessary that you know you take care but um, if you have then good and people who are um, watching this uh, interview right now if you have if you don't have insurance please upgrade your insurance that because it's going to cost a lot of money you never know what is ahead of you because nowadays every treatment is going to cost a bomb the moment you enter hospital itself they will give you bills take this is for you so please upgrade your uh, insurance um yeah that is because the moment i got uh, i got i was diagnosed all my male classmates started upgrading their insurances so i am the example for them to make insurance decisions and i think if people are if it's if it's helping you if it's going to help you then why not and especially in this corona time you never know i don't know when this is going to end this corona thing but nobody knows for cancer for sure you should have definitely 
a good amount of insurance because it's easily 25 plus lakhs for sure minimum 25 you will spend and um, yeah yeah financially you should definitely have this this much amount ready insurance it should you and you should choose a hospital that is tied up with the, your insurance yeah so that that is one thing that you have to see sometimes you will say okay my i am the example i didn't choose the insurance linked hospital my insurance is not connected to the hospital that i chose it is reimbursement but i want at that hospital that doctor don't do that mistake <laughs> because hospital is important yes but insurance also important because 25 lakhs is not a joke no it is it is a big amount so yeah these are some tips the mistakes from my mistake um, please don't do these mistake you can do different mistakes but not don't repeat my mistakes choose a hospital with a insurance um, and have a very good uh, insurance policy um, which is very very important because people do ask when you start the treatment they ask the first question is do you have insurance and you you can't take insurance today and get admitted tomorrow Three months you need to have, then only you can claim. So obviously, uh, that is how it works. Um, yeah. So that's all about it. I can think of only so much <laughs> right now. I just have one last thing. Uh, just one parting message to the people who are going through this journey. If you can just sum it up in one line or two lines, something a parting message. Parting message. Okay. as i told you earlier that uh this uh the the end result of this journey is not actually important yes it is important but um it you don't have to think too much about or oh, what is it i mean how is it going to be but this journey is for sure you are anyway you will have to go through this whatever number of months six months 12 months 3 years so you try to make your journey as uh, you know as uh, colorful as possible by investing a lot of time in different activities that keep up your spirit your spirit will definitely come down uh, but you it is all up in your hand um, you can't depend on another person to keep your spirits high you have to do things by yourself and it will be good for you when you try to be uh, independent so it's don't think about uh, oh god what's going to happen tomorrow and feel anxious about it because anxiety is another issue uh, here but don't think and be anxious about tomorrow just enjoy this pain enjoy this journey um, because it has happened to you and you are um, a very special person that's why it's has happened to you and um, i'm 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 just wishing that um, you have the uh, you know strength and um, will power to you know come through all of, come come out through all of this and it's going to be easy if you think it's going to be easy definitely it will be uh, easy for you it's not it's not difficult and all because i have come out i know it is difficult but it is not impossible you will you will definitely come out of it okay and uh, take rest drink a lot of water i think you have to keep drinking even though if you are not uh, thirsty also it's okay keep drinking lot of water eat uh, as many fruits as possible talk to your doctor uh, take as much information from your doctor yeah that's it thank you so much kripa for doing this i can not appreciate your bravery and the thing that you said that you're special because you you have it and you have it that's why you're special and yeah. the rarest thing so uh, matlab looking at looking at this thing in such a positive light no, not many people can do that because people are like why has this happened to me but mm-hmm. looking at uh, looking at it in a different way and i really can't appreciate the much i that i want to appreciate you i i i can't do that but seriously i hats off to your bravery i applaud it 
Thank you. I really don't have words because uh, throughout your journey, I was just listening. What whatever you was just saying, I was listening, and through that, I just realized that uh, even after all this, even after having the rarest type of cancer, and even going through all this, and you're just telling me right now that uh, I was special. <laughs> I don't know. I don't say it to myself that I am special. So I'm really just. I don't know what to say to you, but I'm proud of this. Okay, Honestly, I appreciate it.